G'day you folks, we're going to have a look at how to create a simple uh, ARK Survival Ascended dedicated server. Uh, there's a couple of points and a couple of different chapters that will be involved here, so make sure you search down the bottom for the chapter that you're interested in. We're pretty much going to go through, first of all, how to create a basic server in Steam, how to create a basic server uh, in another location, which may not necessarily be your Steam install directory, or it might even be on another server. Uh, other than that, we will then move on to how you add mods to those servers, including modded maps. Uh, which will then be followed by maybe some adjustments that you might like to make like the dinosaur levels as well as then some basic archon commands for things like wanting to save the world before you actually exit out so make sure you check out the chapters and choose the one that you're interested in all right the first one that we'll look at is the steam dedicated server uh, to install that you pretty much just go into steam in your library and instead from the drop down list choosing games you want to choose tools uh, within that i've got it filtered by installed you want to go and basically find the arc survival ascended dedicated server and just install that as is and uh, that will put a new folder within your steam common folder so instead of the actual install which is arc survival ascended you'll get arc survival ascended dedicated server inside that you'll then have your its own shooter game saved config windows server and within this folder you'll be able to put your game user settings and your game.ini file um, with the various things that you might want with your taming rates and all the rest of that sort of stuff uh, beyond that um, you can actually right click on that and get properties and this will actually have the command line options so if you want to put in things like the no battle eye or you can put mods in here and a few other switches you can do it here uh, i find this a little bit limiting because um there's some other switches like ports and things like that you might want to run it on that don't seem to be here but they can go in the config file so there's a couple of different ways but we're going to be going with a very basic version uh, at least with this one uh, i'm not doing anything within the launch options here everything will be done in a different spot which kind of leads us into the next section, which is how do I install this dedicated server somewhere other than Steam? So it might be on another server or a different directory. So I've got a copy here of the file that I run to do the updating or the installing. So this actually does both. And so what I have is I've gone onto the internet and basically downloaded Steam CMD. You'll need to do this and basically put it somewhere in your computer. I have it under my F drive Steam CMD. When you run the Steam CMD.exe with this style of uh, command line, and I'll put all this stuff down in the description, and if it doesn't fit in the description, it will be in the pinned comment below. Uh, you force the install directory, you choose which drive and what base directory you actually want it installed on. Uh, in this case, I'm using a logon and username, um, username and password rather. Uh, so this is my Steam username and my logon. Uh, this is obviously not it because I've actually blanked it out. And then you do an app update. And this 2430930 is the ID of the dedicated server for Arc Survival Ascended. So that's pretty much the key number there that you actually need. Validate plus exit, so it'll close out afterwards. And when you run that, in the first instance, it will install it into that base directory. And if it exists in that directory, it will do a validation and then it will download any updates that may be present. So this is a, a dual purpose thing that you can actually just keep running uh, whenever you know Wildcard delivers a patch or an update to the servers, you can run this again and it will actually update your server. Uh, the next part to all of this, now that you've basically got these things set up and they're in the directories that you want, actually the second part to that is this base directory, you can actually point that at the Steam directory so you can actually go to, let's open that folder back up again. So you can actually point it at the common Arc Survival Ascended dedicated server. You can actually have that as your base directory here in this and your batch file can actually run the update rather than actually relying on the inside of the Steam. Um, but as much of a much as if there's an update there, you just run it and it's, it's effectively the same thing. All right, so we've basically looked at how you actually install a server and the fact that you can install it in different locations the next thing that we might want to do is we we'll want to be able to run it obviously in steam you pretty much just launch the dedicated server and it will fire up and it will actually give you the the console showing you that it's actually running um, but in the other way that you'll need to be able to do that is we need the launch copy all right so within this one we now have a very similar sort of a thing we're basically going to the directory where the base install of your item is you go into the shooter game, the binaries, and the Windows 64 directory. Inside of that will be the Arc Ascended server.exe. You then have to pass that a bunch of parameters. Now this is the one that actually caught me up, and there's a bunch of really friendly people uh, in amongst the chaff of the Arc Discord, the official Discord, and this was the thing that I actually didn't have right. I had the island as the map. 
but with the ascended ones it needs an underscore WP on the end. You then have a, uh, a, li a question mark listen, question mark session name. So the session name is the name that it will appear in the list when you're actually going searching servers in the list inside the game. You can then give it a server password so that you can protect it from other people getting in. You then need to give it some a port and a query port. Uh, I think the default is 7777 and the query port will be 27015. Mine is two incremented off that because I actually had, this is kind of a copy from a cluster that I had for Arc Survival Evolved. Give it a number of players. There are a whole heap of switches here that will probably be available and documented in the future. As I said, we're going for basic. All right, so we're giving it a name, we're giving it a password, we're setting up some ports. You will need to make sure that these ports are forwarded in your modem and you'll need to make sure that your firewall is set up so that these ports will actually pass it through and that this executable is also in the firewall as an allowed program within the firewall. So ports are open, the firewall's open for the ports and the firewall's open for the program and it'll give you the best possible chance of it actually succeeding. And in this case, we've actually got the switch that we actually saw. So I should be able to actually make this a bit bigger and you see it's actually all on one line. All right, and so that's our no battle eye. Um, yeah, I don't really need the battle eye because what I'm actually doing here is I'm actually creating a server on my own machine that I can actually connect to. So instead of playing single player, I'm actually playing on a server because there's a number of bugs in single player amongst other things. And so you get that proper authentic, authentic experience of playing on a server, but it's your own dedicated server uh, just for you. Or you could even, once you've opened all these ports up, you can invite your friends and give them your password and things like that. All right, so now that we've actually set up a server, uh, we've set up our dedicated server either in Steam or otherwise, so we can probably actually get rid of Steam for now, and we'll have a break from talking. So the next one that we are going to want to have a look at is we're gonna have a look at how you would launch a server with mods. And I'm actually quite happy with the way that this one ended up happening. Uh, they've done it in quite a different way. In terms of launching the mods, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's just a command line switch. You put a dash mods equals and then the mod numbers themselves. When you actually go into the game, we're gonna go in there very soon and we're gonna have a look at the mods. You can go to the mod authors page. You can find these numbers that belong to it here. I have the Svartalheim map mod and it's the, uh, it's, it's like a super, um, spyglass mod so i've got one of each i've got a map mod um, and i have an actual mod for the game itself programmed in there and that's how you do it and as it is this doesn't actually need to download any mods to your server because what actually happens is in game it identifies that those mods are the ones that are required and tells the client side so the person trying to join the server that these are the mods that they need installed but the server itself doesn't need them it just needs to specify that they're being used and the program takes care of everything. And so from what I can tell, it's a, it's a really nice clean way for the servers to be able to run. So what we might do at this point is we're actually going to try and run this modded server. And one of the things I actually forgot to actually put in there, um, at the moment, I'm going to be running this with the Svartalhine map. You don't actually want to run the island map. That's the very first part in here. We actually want to change that to the map, the mod map's actual name. So in this case, it's Fadelheim underscore WP is the map name, and it's actually going to be using the mod with the mod number 893657. So you need both of those things to make the map actually work itself. Uh, so I might as well save that as my talking point. Otherwise, I'm going to launch the program. And so here we have the server console that gets launched now. So this is actually something that will happen regardless of what server you've got, whether you're running it through Steam, whether you're running it in your own. Um, what ends up happening is the Arc Ascended server console fires up. Uh, and initially it'll look basically like this and it'll just show you the, the progress of your actual server initializing. If you want to get the extra commands, if it hasn't been turned off where there's a, a switch that can turn these things off, uh, there's a little double arrow. And when you expand that, you can actually start filtering your log or you can exclude things from your log. You can clear your log, so on and so forth. But you actually get an Archon command line interface also down the bottom. And that's what we're going to talk about later on. But for now, we're just waiting for my server to start up itself. All right, so that's actually fired up. Uh, I'm obviously gonna be blurring out some of that because it will actually have my uh, stock standard passwords and whatever else. But that's basically what you're looking for in terms of the console. It's fired up, we've got the full startup, and now we can go and check out what it looks like in the game. All right, we're in the game. Actually, one of the mods is already updating, but if we go into the game and we choose to join a game, we should be able to search for the server that I've actually just put in. I have a password protected one, so you make sure you have that ticked. It's refreshed all by itself. 
Uh, we have noted that sometimes when you come in here and all this is set up properly, your server may not show up immediately. You just need to give it a bit of time. It might take a little while for uh, the, the list to actually pick up that you've actually got a server waiting to be there. Uh, it can only show 200 servers at a time. And so by refreshing it, you'll actually get a different set of uh, servers that are available. So I've chosen at the top here, unofficial. I've typed in, we've got, make sure that we're actually looking for our show protected and you can hit refresh and eventually your server will appear here. Now what did I mean by all the stuff about the mods not actually being on the server side? So if I choose to join this Fartelheim map that is Skjavig, it will actually tell me here that the required mods are the Svartelheim mod and I've also got that Spyglass one. Oh, it wasn't the Spyglass, it was the Utilities Plus. So this was the um, reusable mod, right? So I, you can have reusable spears, reusable bowlers, and things like that. I just picked one that I knew that I would actually want in the future. And it's actually telling me that both of these are currently out of date. And so we should be able to, well, that didn't actually do very much, but let's just go back. And so how do we actually deal with the fact that we are looking for mods? Should we go escape? No, I'm back. Back, back, back. Ah, there it is. It's a hidden back button. What we want to do is we want to go to our mod list. So in the mod list, we will be able to see the full list of mods that are actually available currently uh, for everyone to use. Uh, this interface is quite basic at this point in time. Um, obviously, you can search, uh, but you know, there's nine pages of mods here, but it's only showing a few. Once more mods get in here, they're going to have to work out a nicer way for these to be filtered. Um, obviously they've got some categories here, but I think this UI could be a lot better. But for now I can go to my installed ones and you know, you could search them. You know, you would go Svartelheim in the search, you would put in your utilities plus in the search and there they go. Uh, apparently one of these is not up to date. It's our Svartelheim one of all things. So we're gonna update that. And once that's uh, updated, we will then jump into the game and show that it's actually working. So I guess for uh, sake of completeness, uh, if you were to basically use your single player side of things, uh, to be able to access these mods once you've installed them from that mod list, uh, so for Svartelheim, for example, you would go to mod arcs. So that's mod arcs is where you choose your modded maps that you want to play on. But if you go to mod settings, this is where you can choose from the available ones that you've installed so far. So here's my utilities plus, and I could choose to activate that and actually put it in there. And the way you activate it is down the bottom here. And again, I'm not, the, the UI is a little bit clunky at this point in time, but if I chose to activate that mod, we can now see inactive mods that I've actually got utilities plus, or I can deactivate it, disappear Appears, but it's still in my installed and available mod list. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna be waiting for the Svartelheim mod to install. And this is how I was also saying that it doesn't appear to be on the server side. The server side just tells you what mods are actually being utilized. And then the, uh, the application itself is taking care of everything. So it's, it's quite seamless in that regard. And it's, I'm quite happy with how that one comes about because at least from a server management point of view, it's very, very simple. You just plug in your list of mods that you want your map to use. And then on the client side, the clients just make sure that they have what they need and in they go. Okay, the Svartelheim map is now installed. And before we jump in to make sure that it's actually working, we might as well jump into the next section, which is how do you adjust the dinosaur levels? Well, there's a couple of spots that you're actually gonna be looking for. In the game.ini, there is a setting called max difficulty. If this is equal to true, you're effectively saying to the, the machine that you want max level dinosaurs, which is considered 150. And so if you want to change it so that it's not 150, you probably want to change this so that max difficulty equals false. And then in your game user settings.ini, you've got the difficulty offset and the override official difficulty. The difficult off, difficulty offset equal to one without max difficulty usually gives you dinosaurs of level 120. So you want to set the difficulty offset to its maximum, which is actually a one. Uh, there is supposed to be ways to set this higher, but from what I understand at the moment, anything higher than a one doesn't really do anything. And we're going to go and test that out because I've set the override official difficulty equal to 10. And whatever this override official difficulty is, is effectively the increments of the levels. So if you put an override official difficulty of five, the creatures would basically get increments of levels of five, which give you a maximum level of 150. If you had official override of four, which means you know every four increments, it would give you a max level 120. So in this case, where we've got official override difficulty of 10, we should find creatures with 
uh, level 300 is the max in this particular case and we're going to test whether this difficulty offset currently does nothing as I haven't really tested this out yet uh, if it fails I'll pull up the the Nitrado Hickey, wiki page because you can also go search it up for yourself they kind of pasted uh, what was available in survival evolved as the progression of difficulty offsets and override official difficulties as what should be in ascended but uh, I've been told that this first one doesn't really do much other than anything below one will do something everything above one will not won't okay here we are so uh, yeah our Svartalheim's installed out of date still with the utilities plus it's not out of date so I'm not sure what's going on with that there's obviously something slightly buggy it shouldn't prevent us from joining it didn't the last time that I did this spawn we can already tell that it's a Svartalheim map because the spawn is very specific to Svartalheim all right, so we need to run around now. We, we're obviously in the Svartalheim map, uh, but we need to prove that we've just changed the dinosaur levels to level 300 as a maximum. Okay, we have, oh, we've even got some of the babies. Oh, what's this purple dusty look? I haven't seen that before. What's wrong with you? Okay, whatever. Oh, and just to prove the point, look at that. We have a male parasaur. It is level 300. So it just proved the point that the uh, you, you set the first slider to one and then you push your if override official difficulty to the increments in the levels that you actually want. Does that mean there's like three babies here that are all level 300? I have noticed that the babies inherit the, the levels of the parent, the mother. So when you see that lovely little heart symbol in white, uh, so you got a mum, you look around and you probably should find babies. You kill the... Well, it's actually a male, it's not a mum. So that male's the parent to, to these two, right? It's according to that symbol, at least that's what I've noticed so far. You kill the parent and then you can imprint the babies. So basically you're creating an orphanage of dinosaurs by uh, slaughtering parents and taking the babies for your own. Uh, it's, it's such a horrid concept, but that's basically what you're able to do. What have we got? Level 190, yeah, it's an increment of 10, nice. Just making sure that there's a, not just all level 300s, because that would be a bit silly. That's also a level 190. I did notice that they had the exact same color scheme. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some basic Archon commands. So we, before, when we're looking in the console, as I said, make sure you use the little double arrow to open up the Archon utility so that you can actually do some stuff. And here we have my Svartalheim actual server directory, and I've actually gone into the saved arcs. And we've actually got the saved arc file. So in here, it hasn't actually ever saved at all since I first started running it. We've got zero kilobytes, the 907 timestamp. Current time is 918. If I was to type in save world, which you would expect to be the command to save the world nothing happens 907 right nothing's actually changed and the reason for this is in the archon utility that we've got here we need to make sure we type it as if you were using the cheat so we need to type in cheat save world and when we do this we can actually see that the file timestamp is actually updated and we've actually got a file size now so 918 and then if you want to be able to quit and you want to be able to save this so that it actually quits out nicely normally you would type in do exit but nothing happens. So what we actually actually need to do, which I don't know why this is a cheat, but I guess it is. If, if anyone could actually type in do exit to the console and force your server to shut down. But yeah, cheat, do exit, and closing by request, and our server is now shut down nice and clean, and uh, we have a saved position ready to go. Well, that's pretty much it. That's how I have now finally set up my basic uh, servers in terms of my dedicated servers that I'll be running for myself uh, and potentially for other people in the future. Not right now. But um, the thing that obviously is missing in all of this is I'm not really going to show off any ways of managing servers or utilities or anything like that. All that extra stuff is going to come later. At this point, this is all that I've really got. I'm just going to be running some basic servers myself using these methods. Um, that being said, like, yeah, leave some comments down below. If you know of some tools that are already already available, uh, if you know somebody else who's already got some management tools or management commands that are really useful, let me know. It'd be uh, very handy to have. And hopefully this has all helped you out. Uh, it has certainly uh, been an interesting journey to learn all this stuff. And hopefully this information is useful to you too. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.